Welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival. We're here in the beautiful Allied Kitchen and Bath showroom with Chef Oliver Saucy from Cafe Max How in Fort you? Lauderdale. Nice Walk us through what you're going to make today. I believe it's a, a, a beautiful seafood dish. Yeah, we're going to make two dishes. The first one we're going to do is we're going to make a lobster tail dish. Florida lobster is just starting to roll. All right. So uh, it's actually a margarita lobster where we're going to marinate it with some tequila and like all the ingredients that you would make a margarita with. Can I just drink the tequila? Yeah, there you go. I got a whole <laughs> bottle right there. Come with the shrimp. And then uh, the next one is going to be a Mediterranean shrimp. All right. So first thing we want to do is we want to prep our lobster. Got some nice, beautiful tails here. These are about eight ounces or so. Yeah, you went and caught this. Uh, yeah, not quite. In, but. in mini season this week. <laughs> but what we want to do is really simple. We're going to split these right down the middle. You want to loosen the other side. And this is the important part right here where you want to do is loosen this meat. You still want to keep it attached, but you want to loosen it. And what happens if you don't loosen it, it gets like a little bit, uh, it really makes it inconvenient to eat. Oh, it's, okay. uh, when it cooks, it kind of sticks inside the shell. Gotcha. So it's just a, a technical detail to make it a little easier for down the road. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put this in a bowl and we're going to do a little marinade. And what are we, what are we marinating in today? Tequila. I'm, I'm good. Is there a specific brand that you No, nah, it's not, they're all good. I think what I like to do is have the ones that uh, are the golden variety. Seems to have a little bit more flavor okay. than the white ones. I like my tequila wet. Gonna add in here just a splash of margarita mix. You can make your own. I got those lazy today. <laughs> and we're gonna Nothing wrong with that. Add a little bit of lime juice into here. Give that a little cut, make it a little easier to squeeze. So far, this seems pretty simplistic, like I can make it in my own kitchen. Yes, yes, yes. When I uh, would do my cooking classes, which we've done a lot over the years, I try to do things that uh, you don't have to go to six stores to <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> but I know it's got to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more challenging because it's not everybody's first day. Right. The Food Network's been on for how long? <laughs> oh, wrong one. So we're going to get our uh, saute pan hot. We're going to add in here a little bit of ground pepper. We're going to add a little bit of salt. We're going to add just a little bit of chopped garlic. Some olive oil. And in a perfect world, you let this go like, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. If you let it go too much, it turns like ceviche. You don't want that. <laughs> Just going to mix it up. Just going to kind of mix that up. Now, Chef, outside of this, is there something special about Cafe Max? I know it's been around forever. Yeah, we've been there a long time. I mean, you know, it's an honest effort there. We really try to make the, the right decisions and make nice food and try to get the best ingredients I can get my hands on. Now, something special about the restaurant is your menu is constantly changing. Yeah, yeah. We print every day. Obviously, everything doesn't change every day. I've got a bunch of things that are kind of like some of the standard things, the tuna pizza and the onion crusted snapper. If I get rid of that stuff, it'd be a riot. <laughs> so right, I think so. Uh, our saute pan, eh, just about there. Is this a medium Can, heat, a high heat? This is kind of a medium to high. Uh, on the grill, you'd probably want to be a little higher. This one here, that's kind of thick on a saute pan. So if it was a little bit, uh, I'll take that. Softer would be better. Then I'm going to do is put a lid on this. Just kind of leave it cracked. And how long are we going to just let it sit? Uh, you know, lobster like this on this pan, we're going to see it's probably going to take about uh, three minutes on the first side. Then we're going to flip it. Okay. Then we're going to uh, add a little more tequila and stuff and we'll flip it back over to cook it. So I'm going to say about six minutes for this. Gotcha. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is make our uh, margarita vinaigrette. And in this bowl here, I have some chopped jalapenos, some cilantro, and some chopped scallions. And now to that, we're gonna add a little bit of pineapple juice. We're gonna make some uh, lime zest. And now what makes this. a lime zest? The zest is the, uh, just the colored part just under the skin. Okay. If you get a little too far, you know what happens, right? It gets real pithy and kind of bitter. So that's why you want one of these. Used to be get these at Home Depot. Now they actually have them at all the fancy stores. But this is really fine. And this is going to give a hint and of lime at the yeah, end. Yeah, you can see where that's coming off of there. All right. 
And this stuff gets really strong, so you want to be careful. I think that's it right there. We're good to go. You can start to smell the flavors of, of your dish. We're going to add some lime juice into here. Oh, that's a nice juicy lime for the size of it. Then we're going to come on. My favorite part. With some more tequila. Then I'm going to add in here just a dab of hot sauce. Then we come back with our margarita mix. That should not do it. Now, I love that you've not measured a damn thing. Well, <laughs> after after a few years of doing this, you kind of get <laughs> you get the hang a little bit. <laughs> gonna add a drop of vinegar into here, and then we're gonna mix in our oil. It's kind of like a a broken vinaigrette. You can mix your heart till your heart's content, but it's always gonna separate, <laughs> which is fine. Gonna some add pepper. in some pepper, some salt. You can see how we eat that simple, right? So I used to always say at my cooking classes, it's complicated, simple food. Complicated, simple food. All right, you can see how this is cooking here. This looks incredible. I'm gonna switch to this burner. Get some of this juice. But you can see how that's starting to cook, right? Absolutely. And it'll come right out of the, the shell easy. Yeah, right. And you'll see there'll be like a nice little interesting, almost like a teepee effect that we can do with this. So we're going to have this. This can be done while you're waiting or kind of have it done ahead. And then what we're going to do is make a pineapple carpaccio. All right. It's a thin sliced pineapple. So all I did, I just kind of peeled it down. I'm going to take the tough part out of there. Come on, tough part. Then just gonna cut that with a sharp knife as thin as I can. So it's easier to do this with a whole pineapple instead of going to Publix and getting pineapple slices? Uh, well, they probably won't be this thin. So when that's done, what we're gonna do is sprinkle some pink peppercorns on top of that. We're gonna come with some salt and sprinkle on that as well. Then we're going to add some scallion. You quickly got the scallion. I have it inside there somewhere. Perfect. Then we're going to cut this super thin. Make sure you can keep your eye on what you're doing. <laughs> As you don't look at it at all. <laughs> One of the classes I had for the, the shin, I had a contest of uh, who could cut the onion the fastest. I don't know why I did that. But. Does it sound like it didn't go well? Uh, it, it was <laughs> it was entertaining, I can tell you that. So it looks like you're gonna lay the lobster right on top of this? That's exactly what you're doing, see? All right. Chef Corey, that works. <laughs> All right, the flambe part. Tequila in. Wait a All right, safety first, put out the fire. <laughs> I like it. All right, so we're gonna let that go. Yeah, fire's out. I'm gonna flip that back over. So on average, this is roughly a 10 to 15 minute dish. Oh, uh, probably, if you know. Might not be able to go quite as fast as what I do, but this isn't an all afternoon. So we got a platter here that we set up. I garnish it with some jalapeno slices going around. Then I have some endive here. I'm sorry, you have some what? Endives. All right, walk me through what this is. Uh, it's a uh, chicory. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a bitter lettuce. Okay. And then they grow it without the sun. That's how it stays so white. Kind right. of like white asparagus. Anyway, we're going to put some of that down. So this is more for presentation? Yeah, absolutely. And it tastes good. So for this, all we do is we're gonna take our vinaigrette, try to get into the bottom and get all the dressing. 
all the components. You get it too much from the top, it's all oil. You get it too much from the bottom, it's all the vinegar and the acid. I think this is done, I'm cutting that one. All right, so here's our uh, base setup. And then from there, I think that these are done. This yeah. looks great. Hey, look, we got some color on there. So the way you can check these, you just kind of click it out. I know you can't see that, but it's almost a little opaque still. That's what you want, kind of like right. mid-well. So by the time it gets to the table, it's perfect. Uh, the other thing that we want to get on here is a little bit of goat cheese. So the easiest way to do that is just to have a spoon and just kind of make some little dabs going around. There's a lot on this dish, but it seems so simplistic. I love it. It is simple. It's really perfect for the Florida heat. You know, it's uh, so damn hot out there all the time. So now we come with our lobster. I call them lobster teepees. <laughs> So I'm like that. Whew. Chef, this looks incredible. That's pretty damn hot. But it is pretty simple if you really think about it. Maybe a little too much on that plate. We want to give this a little bit of crunch so I have some almonds. Gonna put it over the top of that. Then we're gonna come with some. I'm just pulling the bottom of that for me, thank you. Some cilantro sprigs on there. And a little barbaric. Whoop. All right, I think that's it, right? Then we're gonna do, once it's all together, we come back, we get a little bit more of our vinaigrette and just Plays the lobster a little bit. And then, uh, did I use up all my limes? I guess I did. So, perfect world, you put a big lime on the top there. But I juiced them all out. So, margarita lobster with carpaccio of the pineapple with goat cheese, the almonds. Chef, this looks incredible. I can't <laughs> wait to dive into it. Dig in and enjoy. We've actually created Allied Kitchen and Bath with several things in mind, and that is the culture of our company and the quality of work that we do, so that people can come to our showroom and truly get a unique and different experience knowing we are going to stand behind their work 110%. Whether it be today, tomorrow, or in the future, Allied will always be there for our clients. That's one thing we will never sacrifice. Welcome back. We're in, back in the Allied Kitchen and Bath showroom with In the Kitchen with Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival's friend, um, Chef Oliver Saucy from Cafe Max. Very nice, thank you. Chef, we just made an incredible dish of uh, grilled lobster, and I know we're going to move on to uh, shrimp, it looks like. So walk us through what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, we're going to, we have uh, three components to this shrimp. It's more like a Mediterranean dish. The last one we did was maybe a little, you know, southwestern slash South Florida kind of deal. All right. So we have a couscous salad that we're going to make here. I'll explain that in a minute. We have these uh, tiny little shrimp that we're going to uh, marinate and, uh, and saute. I spent all morning getting those for you, so. Uh... <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then uh, over here, we're gonna make a remoulade. So I think the first thing that we wanna do is we're gonna put a light little marinade on these shrimp. A little bit of chopped garlic. It's not a lot. It really overpowers really pretty quick. Garlic, I feel like a lot goes a long way all the yeah. time. Then we're gonna add a little bit of oil in there. I'm going to add a dash of Tabasco. And I'm going to come over here. A little bit of light white wine. And then what I didn't put yet, I have a little bit of salt. And some ground pepper. And that's it. We're just going to kind of toss that around. And same kind of thing here, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. We're not making ceviche. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Then uh, while our pan is getting hot here, 
we're gonna make our uh, lemon caper remoulade sauce. So far I have some prepared mayonnaise in here and I also have some uh, chopped basil. And to this now we're gonna add some chopped capers. We're gonna add some pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic, maybe just a little bit more. <laughs> then I'm gonna get some lime juice into here. Let me use lemon, lemon juice. juice. I'm gonna use my uh, nature strainer. <laughs> now, Chef, as you're doing this, um, rumor has it that you grew up in a castle. Uh, for the first six years of my life, I lived in a castle in uh, West Germany. My dad was, uh, he was a chef also, and he was the uh, food and beverage manager of the, uh, of the resort castle. People would go there to get married. It was on top of the hill. It was sounds really like kind of cool. Sounds like a fun experience. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, all these ingredients here, we're just gonna mix them around. Did I add salt? I'm gonna add a little more. Then we're gonna put a drop of vinegar into here. And then for, I don't know, half my life, I used to make all my own aiolis. And we always had the uh, food critic from the New York Times come into Cafe Max every winter. And she was telling me she got really bad salmonella poisoning from a very fancy restaurant in Manhattan from raw egg yolks. So ever since then, I'm like, I don't want any part of that. So I just use prepared mayonnaise. And what I do, I finish it with a nice extra virgin finishing oil. So it takes that store-bought taste away. Nice. And it has that look with the green of a, uh, a real aioli. It's a simple, All right. It's a simple fix. People are going to do it at home. Yeah. So this can be done the day before. Not a problem. I'm going to set that aside. This is getting hot here. I'm going to add a little oil in there. Just coating the pan. Yeah, making sure that's nice and hot. This isn't as thick as the lobster, so if we don't get this hot right at the beginning, yeah, that's the sound we want. Stand back, he's running the place down. <laughs> Put a lid on that. Yeah, I could probably even now how long should, adjust that heat. This is not long this at all. This is probably going to be about two minutes on the one side and one minute on the other side. So in this bowl here, I have some uh, Israeli couscous. It's a pearl pasta, and it's kind of like a toasted pearl. Okay. And you cook it just like pasta in boiling water, strain it, ice it off, and now we're gonna mix that with our ingredients. Let me just look in here. Oh yeah, that's what we want, look at that. See that nice pink color? Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna cut the heat on that. By the time that thing goes for a while, it's gonna stay just fine. So in here, you I don't know if you can see that, we don't have an overhead, but I got some chopped red onion, have some olives, have some sun-dried tomatoes, have some chopped basil on the bottom there. We got some diced tomatoes and some diced cucumbers. Now to that, we're gonna add in some pepperoncini, some crumpled uh, feta cheese, some Parmesan cheese and come here with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. There's a lot of color in this dish. Yeah, I like colorblind. Uh, I'm, I like color and I'm colorblind. Can you believe <laughs> that one? I mean, I can see the different shades, but if you show me purple and blue, like it's like Barney, is that purple? What you got on? This is actually pink. Well, see? <laughs> <laughs> It's blue. Then we're going to add some uh, extra virgin olive oil in here. And we're going to just toss this around. Now, what's what makes your restaurant so special? Well, it's because I'm there. No, no. <laughs> Everybody there really, uh, you know, tries really hard to do the right thing. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm proud of uh, what we did, it was a good day. And, uh, you know, it's really based on just getting the fine ingredients and then cooking them properly. And, you know, all that stuff, all that technical stuff that you don't think about when you come to a restaurant. <laughs> it sounds like there's a passion for what you do and the, the food that you're making. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a... 
something that you, not everybody has it. All right, so this is better off if you make this a few hours ahead of time, kind of let it set up. To me, whenever I make like a chilled pasta salad or anything like that, it's amazing when you let it sit for a couple hours, how the flavors kind of settle in and you want to kind of re-toss it and then re-season it when it's that time. So for presenting our dish here, I'm going to slice up a little bit of uh, tomato. And then we're just going to kind of put that down for a little presentation. Then going in between there, we got some little artichoke hearts that I have here. from this dish to your last dish. I know this presentation is a, is a theme here. Yeah, well, if people eat with their eyes. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to be a chef to understand that one. <laughs> so then what we're gonna do, gonna put, uh, I guess if I had a little mold, it would be the best, but I don't. So we're just gonna get some of that down there, like so. And then we're gonna come along with the shrimp. Now, is this a feature that's on your menu all the time? Oh uh, yeah, actually I have this on the menu right now. Uh, then we're gonna come over here. Look at this nice, gorgeous basil. I'll put just a little bit of that right in the middle. Look at that. And then what we wanna do, we're gonna come back here with our remoulade sauce. What I love about this dish is there's so much into it, but it seems so simple. They're, yeah, they're simple and obviously, you know, I kind of had everything all prepped and everything. It's a lot easier when you have a team of sous chefs getting everything ready for you. Well, I told you no. to put me to work. And... <laughs> I'm gonna garnish this with a little bit of lemon because I can. <laughs> it's a good excuse because I can. And there we have it. Mediterranean shrimp and orzo salad with lemon caper remoulade. Listen, I can't wait till we turn off the cameras and I can dive right into this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy it. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen at the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival. Thank you to Allied Kitchen and Bath for allowing us to use their showroom. Check out Cafe Max and Chef Oliver Saucy. Chef, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. We're just so honored to be a part of this and Allied, you know, we have also been a staple in the community and the restaurants that we work with so many uh, throughout the years. We just love our uh, restaurant partners and, and thank you for being a part of our community. Uh, if you haven't been to uh, Cafe Max, uh, 2601 East Atlantic in Pompano, Atlantic Avenue in Pompano, it's absolutely fabulous, off the charts. Right now, I know Dine Out Fort Lauderdale has special, I think it's like $45 for like a four quarts meal. Food is absolutely incredible. We love uh, going to your restaurant always. So thank you, Chef, once again, for being here and helping us promote our restaurants in the local community. Thanks for having me, enjoy the shrimp. Thank you, Chef.